What's up, everybody? What you doing? My name is Ultimate DJs. Welcome in to another teaching trick video here on the YouTubes and lots of requests for a breakdown in exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. So we are going to be doing you a quick and dirty on brand new content. Let's jump right in on into the game. And here's what we're going to do today. We are talking about this cool cat right here. Uh, come on down here to the bottom. Where's Jet? Where's Jet to the bottom? Uh, right here we go. Sam Rutherford. Yay! Sam Rutherford. Now, I've got mine to tier three. And why uh, I decided to invest a little bit extra into this officer, I'm going to tell you why. I had a couple of sneaking suspicions, particularly about the lower deck abilities, and I'm feeling kind of good about it. Here's what we've done today, folks. We've done a little bit of testing specifically on Sam Rutherford. So here is your quick and dirty. If you got questions, leave your comments and your questions in the section down below, and we'll be sure to answer those as quickly as we possibly can. Now, my Rutherford is, in fact, Tier 3. As a matter of fact, we're going to pop on over here and take a look at STFC.Space. Shout out! Here's Sam Rutherford. And at Tier 3, we can see him getting a 90% boost to the shield health. Now, just like Tendi, these are passive abilities. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. And uh, Tier 1 at 50%, obviously getting better by about 20% per level up until Tier 5, getting you a 25% boost. Right now, I'm sitting right smack dab in the middle at 90 percent want to shout out to my testing partner today captain bull thank you very much for coming out and doing a little bit of pvp testing i'm going to show you that uh some battle logs and a very cool new to uh, new tool that i'm really excited to tell you about but the first thing that i want to show you is what i mean by passive ability it's really simple it just means that the abilities are always active it doesn't activate in battle it doesn't proc it doesn't require a stimulus it's literally just right here in the power take a look there's rutherford i pull him down the power drops. That means uh, even if I replace, I'm already at 300%. Even if I replace this officer slot, no change in power. Absolutely nothing because there's no passive abilities being added to the ship. However, if I decide to put on Rutherford, who is just boosting my shield health, it doesn't require it to proc. It doesn't require it to be hit. It doesn't require anything. If I just add this officer, it's giving me more shield. Boom. Power goes up. That's what I mean by passive ability. Now, uh, the first test that we ran is uh, against an enterprise. I'm going to bring you on over in here to Spox.club. This is beautiful. You guys be sure to check this out. It's Spox.club. Just put a little bit of dot right there. That way people know. You can see it because you can't see the browser window. This is a great new tool. I'm going to be talking to you guys a lot about it coming up over the next several weeks, but you should definitely check it out. Spox.club. It does have a login. You can put in research. You can put in efficiencies. You can upload battle logs for later recall it's awesome it does have a login log out feature so it retains the information you put in it's very cool i tested it earlier by putting my syndicate in there and boom there it is it's still there so uh we'll talk to you more about this as time goes on but today i really want to focus in on the battle log so uh shout out again to captain bull first test we did my auger and you guys can see this i'll try to blow this up a little bit for you here you go all right my auger and uh and i chose this crew you guys know i am a huge fan of the discovery pvp crew all right, that's Giorgio as captain, Ash Tyler as uh, officer in Honor Guard Wharf on the side card, particularly Giorgio and Ash Tyler. I'm a huge fan, and I reiterate to you how great they are, how wonderful they are. And if you have the, the uh, Section 31 skin, that's a good thing. You should be working on these officers. They are fantabulous officers, all right? Captain Bull is extremely well-researched. I mean, a, a, a super intelligent player, all right? He's four ops levels up on me, 45 to 49, yet I was still able to barely take out his Enterprise. Now, obviously, there is one big thing here. He was crewed with Marcus, which is his general PvP build, all right? I was able to take advantage of that because I'm flying an Augur, so Marcus not having a huge impact on me. And, of course, he's against the Triangle. So I had a couple of advantages, but still, he had the advantage of four levels of research and a an extra tier on his Enterprise. Level 45, tier 9 maxed at 6.5 million power versus my 5 5.5 million at tier 8 level 40. Now notice it's 5.5 million and not the 5.6 right here because this first test did not have Rutherford. You see here, Captain Bull, no Rutherford. This was my first test. And how you could actually tell that is you can come into, um, 
Let's see. I think there was. Maybe not. It might not be not up here yet, but there was a place where you can see some other officers that are being used. But nonetheless, here's what I want to show here today. Okay. First of all, here's just the summary glance of this first battle. No Rutherford. All right. How much whole health I started with, by the way, not running Tendi, as you guys saw. This was the whole health remaining. Barely made it. Okay. But I did defeat Captain Bull. He had 3.6 million whole health and obviously zero remaining. Note that he did have some shield left because he was running Kirk and that was getting morale. So the shield was regenerating on the Enterprise. He never lost shield. Just as a side note, in this particular battle, even though Captain Bull lost, Rutherford would serve him no purpose here. His shield never fell. The only way that Rutherford is going to give you that extra benefit is if your shield would actually fall. If you've still got shield, then just adding more shield isn't giving you any actual benefit throughout the battle. Mine fell. So obviously Rutherford is a candidate here to come in and do something. All right. Uh, the first thing that I want to draw your attention to here is when my shield depleted, my shield fell. We already know bulls did not, but my shield fell in round six. What I want to show you in this battle log now is the position in which it fell. All right. Because this is actually important and going to prove a point later. We already know from Spox.club it fell in round six. We come down here and we can see it was right towards the end of the round, but he had one more shot. So um, he landed out of that second shot. This is so, so key. And what Bubba Joe has been talking about with shots and firing patterns and things like that, he got an extra shot off. Okay, he got this extra shot, this second shot out of this weapon. And you'll see, because my shield was depleted up here, I had ne a zero shield health damage here. And that means 328,000 of that went straight to my hull. Now, remember that it was still in round six. Remember that that's going to be really, really important. So we got the win. All right. But barely big repair bill uh, or bigger repair bill than I would have liked. OK, so then I did one simple change. And by the way, I'm going to show you what that change was right here on the screen because I still have the ship and everything pulled up. Uh, this first battle, uh, you guys saw just a second ago, the first battle I was running Barrett in this spot, 77,856 attack points. Now, that's important because Ash Tyler is using attack to increase the damage of my shots. This has been a big question. Is the lower deck ability worth losing statistics? So notice here, I'm going to take 77.8. I'm going to drop it down, and I am going to put Rutherford in here, which is dropping me to 72.5, a loss of about 5,300 stat points, which would be 5,300 damage per shot cumulative, OK? could be a lot we don't know we're gonna find out so this was the crew that i subbed out i dropped my attack points just a little bit and then we came back in here to this battle uh with captain bull and uh adding rutherford in okay and i want you to notice the big difference here how much hull i had left all right we saw the one a moment ago not nearly as much it was down here i had one and a half million hull left okay same everything he ran the same crew and everything we're going to come down here of course we can see the amount of damage mitigated and so forth this is all super great stuff and i'm going to come down here to shield depleted again now one thing that do you do point out here is that he did run out of hull this time why or a shield this time now why could that be that could have been some rng that could have been some luck on my obliterator it could have been a couple of extra crits here and there okay nothing related to rutherford made him lose shield however in this particular case right here he lost shield so having rutherford would have provided him a benefit now, there's no way to know that before you go in. You're just going to have to choose your crew carefully when you're deciding whether or not you want to actually add this lower deck ability. I come down here and note that he lost his shield in round eight. That's not, oh, you guys can't see. <laughs> round eight. Uh, there, there it is right there. I still lost mine. Look, I still lost mine in round six. Now, somebody's going to say, well, that didn't even get you an extra round, did it? No, it did not. But let me show you what it did do. All right. Let me show you what it did do. So let's go into this battle log. We're going to come down here to round six. And I said on Twitch the other night, I said it in the podcast, probably in PVP, probably only one, maybe two extra shots. Right. Look what happened here. Look what happened here. It saved me 
all that extra hull damage on this second shot. Same thing, same firing pattern, same timing, but I preserved my shield for one extra shot. And this is what Bubba Joe is talking about. The longer you can preserve your shield, that is the longer you're preserving the 80-20 split between shield and hull. The more that you can do that, the longer life you're going to have. Now, given that he is only increasing the shield by a little bit, and I'm going to show you that here in a second as we wrap up, it is going to buy you about one, maybe two extra shots when you're engaging in PvP. It doesn't seem like a lot, and in this particular case, I went the same number of rounds, but it did save me damage right here, and because I was able to get off the same number of shots, I was able to preserve more of my hull in the subsequent shots that were taken because I was able to extend the life of my shield, all right? Now, one other thing that I want to point out here is we've got this log pulled up. How much did Rutherford actually give me? All right, well, we can see here. Right here's mine, DJ Grumpy Cat. That's me. All right, shield health started with 3.291 million. All right, that's what I started with. Take a note of my hull, uh, 3.9, bulls, 4.1, 3.6. All right, let's come back over here and go back to the no Rutherford test. And we're going to come back to the details and we're going to see everything the same. 3.6, 4.1, 3.9, but only 3.09 million. That was a rough estimate or a rough increase of about 200,000. Where does that come from? I will introduce you or reintroduce you back to stfc.space. My auger, as you saw, is a level 40 tier 8. All right, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to check out. Here's my tier 8. My base shield health right here at about 58, call it 59,000. But I'm also getting my level bonus right here. Shield bonus, level 40, another 150,000. So roughly 200, what, 210, 215, 220,000 is my base shield bonus. All right. And then coming back here to Rutherford, minus tier three, I'm getting 90% of that. And that's why you saw my shield level jump about 200,000 stat points here. And why it was able then to preserve more of my hull longer. Is this a great PvP officer? Maybe, okay, maybe it is going to get you that extra one shot, maybe two, but I made a prediction with Tendi. We talked about it, and we've got another video coming up on Tendi here in a little bit, but I want to show you something kind of cool here real quick, and I have to go back a little bit. Here we go, a level 39 Uncommon Armada. This seems weak sauce. Everybody can do these, right? Most players out there can do this, but let's take a look in this battle log and see what kind of damage it was throwing because some people do lose shields in a battle with armadas, correct? Well, if you're getting 200,000 extra shield, all right, and it, let me come back. Let me show something else here, okay? Before, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump around, okay? Let's go back up here to Captain Bulls. Uh, why is it only going to get you an extra shot or maybe two? Here's why, okay? If we come down here to round six, when I lost my shield, right here we can see the shots that he's throwing 580,000 550,000 a crit of 1.6 672 well if i'm mitigating a good chunk of that but then i still got the 80 20 split i'm still taking a nice big chunk look 413 136 168 it could have been enough for me to buy maybe two shots against captain bull all right maybe only two shots maybe even luckily one round but that's in PvP, where players have a lot of research, damage is flying out the yin-yang, and you got huge, huge numbers. Here is where you actually get a little bit more benefit, in my opinion. And we talked about this with Tendi, being that it is probably going to be mostly beneficial in PvE. Take a look at these shots right here. This is a level 39 un uncommon armada. This is one of the larger armadas that most of you guys are fighting against, and it's throwing a shot of 200,000. 235. Well, you're mitigating a good chunk of that because some of you guys are running with 5 of 11 in the captain's chair, possibly, or some other type of mitigation officer. So I only took 13,000 hull damage. All right. Moreover, only 50,000 shield damage with respect to Rutherford. If I'm getting an extra 200,000 shield and I take 50,000 of that, okay, let's see if I can find uh, a place where I took a shot. Let's see, where did DJ Grumpy Cat take a shot? We're going to try it right here, okay? Right here. 50,000. All right, now, granted, I was fine my Gladius, but let's pretend I was doing with the Enterprise or even a bigger ship like my Jellyfish, okay? 50,000, well, that's four extra shots I can take. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. In an armada, I might only take one or maybe two in a round. And then I might not take any in a round. Take a look at this round right here where I took nothing. That is extending my life. All right. If I get four extra shots from the Armada, but I only took one shot in that round, then zero in the next one. Then I come down here. I got zero in that one. Then I come to the next one. I finally took my second shot. That's at 72. Now I'm at 120. I still have that extra shield. Now I've got two extra, three extra rounds, four extra rounds, five extra rounds, possibly because of the hull damage that Rutherford was able to save me by extending the life of my shields. Folks, it is my opinion that while Rutherford can be good in PvP, it's probably only good for one, maybe two shots, okay? That can be substantial. It absolutely can be. But also in punching up, gold mission bosses, bigger armada targets, okay? Big hostels where shield falls. Rutherford is fantastic across the board. I do believe that for the predominant large majority of the player base, you're going to find greater benefit in your armadas, in your PvE play with Rutherford. And this surprised me a little bit because I really kind of thought, Bubba Joe and I talked, I was thinking that these were going to be great in PvP. And while they do have tangible benefits in PvP, all right, the benefits in select areas of PvE are way, way higher. There you go, everybody. Sam Rutherford, your quick and dirty, your breakdown on this new officer and why your Cerritos, or not your Cerritos, your, uh, yeah, the Cerritos refinery, where all of these officers exist, need to be a high priority for you. That is a, a permanent sourcing chest of these officers, and you must, must, must work on Rutherford and Tendi. We got a video coming out on Tendi coming up here in just a little bit. Questions, comments, leave them in the section below. My name is Ultimate DJ. Sorry, slightly longer, quick and dirty, but lots of good nerd math here, okay? What do you think? Please, while you're here, hit the subscribe button. Click on that bell so you know when we push other educational content out here about our favorite video game. And uh, be sure to give us a big old pause up. <laughs> like you like. Share with your team and put it all over the interwebs. My name is Ultimate DJs here for teaching Trek, saying thank you and meow for now. We'll catch you on the next one. Love you. Meow. Bye. Meow. Bye. Meow. Meow. Bye. <laughs>